Okay. We just began the Mishnah on Daftes. Okay. We just finished the Mishnah. We just go over it again. Hamevi get in Bidin Sayyam. Person brings a get from overseas. So the Mishnah on Daftes says, you have to say, Shlecha say, Fonech, Foninech, Tam. Ve'ene yocholom Foninech, Foninech, Tam. He's not able to say it. As Dumar explained in the first parak, because he became a deaf mute. So he brought it, so he was a qualified shliach. The moment he becomes a deaf mute, he's mute. He's not able to what? He's not a shliach any longer. Because a, sh- a person who's a cheri shot of a koton, I'm not qualified to be, to be a shliach. Because you have to be a, ba- a bardeo. You have to be a functional person, and a person who becomes deaf mute is not considered intelligently functional. Although he's not able to say you certified, you validated with those who had signed on it, or those who recognize the signatures of the the witnesses. Rabbi Lezer says you don't need signatures. Who? Rabbi Lezer. I understand that. What if there's no signatures? No, you need you need everybody who received the signatures. Comes from overseas. How do you know? How do you know the husband wrote this get? Maybe the woman had to get written for herself. Right? That's the Tikkun Olam. Right? So from Leo said that all Gittin, even if we're Blazer, need signatures on it. No. On a Torah level, you don't need signatures. As right, long as right, witnesses right. witness the transfer. But how do you know the witness tra- witness the transfer? So if you have signatures on the get, that means the husband wrote the get. They're not going to sign the get on behalf of a woman. So once we know the husband had to get written... We say with, 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 with certainty it was done properly. So the witnesses tell me that it went from the husband to the wife. Right. Okay? Right. So that, that we know. So that, that's the answer. They're signed on there? They just signed. We signed that this document is a valid document. That's all they signed. Echot giti noshvech shurei Excuse me, Rabbi. If at the time of the writing of the the witnesses signed then, and the get is then delivered by anybody, that's a valid get. It's valid. You don't need, you don't need no, 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 no. It's not the valid. What about if a child will get? Is it valid? Well, I don't, that's my question. I don't who, who has to, do, wait a second, who has to, that's the document. The document's a valid document. But who divorces the wife? The husband must divorce the wife. So that means the one who gives the get has to be a shliach. He has to be qualified to be a shliach. What happens if he's not qualified to be a shliach? Let's say a Gentile brings the get. And he gives the get to the woman. Is she divorced? She's not divorced. Because a Gentile... Could be a shliach. Because she could be a shliach. So she could be the equivalent of the husband giving the get. So if the person becomes a deaf mute, he's not qualified to be a shliach. So he gave it to her as a shliach, then he became a deaf mute. He had a stroke. Right? He, puts in, he has a stroke, he, he can't utter a word. So what do you do? How do you know it's a valid get? Maybe the signatures are what are, are forg- forgeries. So you get w- other witnesses to validate the signatures. That's the mission. You have to witness. You have to see them sign. Them. But he's not able to say it. He's not he's able to say it. He's he's saw it. How do we know he, he saw it? But he has to see it. So if, if, he, if he can't speak and everything, but he didn't see it, he just picked up the get. The, the, the and he gave him the get. And he, he's already a deaf mute? No, he's not. He's never been mute. No, so it's a problem. No, sir, it's a, it's a problem. It's a problem. It's a problem. They can do the same thing. They can sort of well, that we had to see. got to learn the first parak. We said, according to Rabbo, that the reason why you have to say it is because Lishmo, it's more so Lacha Shalom. It's after even the Chutz Lora, it's the pr- fully proficient. So the Morses, but what, so what happens? But we're considering it may revert back. But since it's Mil Sloshchicha, a person becoming a deaf mute the last moment is something which is very remote. Milsul Shalogos Barabonam. So, therefore, since it's an unusual situation, therefore, validating with other witnesses testifying is sufficient. Okay? No, but again. But if. if Are 
No, the, the, the shliach is the, is, the, is the husband. The shliach is the husband giving the get. The get now when it's given to the woman, it's in presence of witnesses. But how do we know? Maybe the woman, maybe he received the get from the woman. Maybe the signatures of forgeries. The husband said, I never gave, the, I never gave this man the get. We won't worry what the husband may say. That's, that's the concern. Wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's do the mission a little bit. Whether it's a rid of divorce or rid of emancipation, shove the modchum maybe. The the equal regarding when you bring or bring the document, molech or maybe you bring from eretz to chutzlor, it's vice versa. Zuachs min adrochim she shove kid nosh lishchivon and regarding for nech for nech that's one of the areas where there's no difference between a get isha and a get shichru. Rid of emancipation or the divorce document. Okay, let's see the Mishnah. The Gemara. You wanted to ask something, something else. Robbie. Uh, you forgot. Uh, okay. No, what I wanted to ask is if the husband uh, appoints a Shia to deliver, and then the Shia appoints somebody else, and then. That's going to be discussed later. That's going to be discussed later. When the Mishnah says he's not able to say why is he not able to say it? Is it because he's a deaf mute? He gave it to a deaf mute to deliver. Is a cherish qualified to deliver a get? All are qualified to bring the get. So if that's the case, how is it valid by just certifying the document who, who's divorcing the woman? The man who gives the get has to be the equivalent of the husband. But a chavish is not qualified to be a shliach. So Rashi says, as, as he said earlier, Sorry. See, we have a post that says ish. Ish means you have to be, you have to be an adult. You have, that means you have to be a bar das. So anyone, you have to have that characteristic. Since a chavish is not considered bar das at that moment, so he's similar to the child. Once he's similar to the child, he's not qualified. Omrev Yosef, When he actually put the getter in her hand, he was fully functional. And he was about to say, And he, was, he wasn't able. And then he became a deaf mute. Right? He had a stroke the last moment. He put it in her hand. So therefore, she's divorced. Now we're, talk, now we're talking at a rabbinical level. The mission says, we equate the divorce document to the writ of emancipation. In three contexts, the get isha, the, the divorce document to the woman, is the same as shichur avodim. Now, one second. There's an important tosis over here. Next to the last tosis, this is the question everybody asked last week. Why do we rely on, on the testimony of a single witness? It says, Because otherwise, to get two witnesses to validate it's very difficult. To get two people to deliver the get. So therefore, we rely on the testimony of one. Because the whole, the whole issue, the whole concern is purely rabbinical. On a Torah level, we're not concerned it's a forgery. But because Allah's the husband may come and, and cast some level of, 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 of question on the get, the validity of the get, it's a question of mamzerim. Therefore, we want to set it in place that it's, it's unquestioned. So right. therefore, therefore, we rely on testimony of one. But shikhr, get shikhr, let him not give the get. Right? Unless you have two witnesses delivering the get and attesting to its validity, don't give the get. Right? The concept of Iguna has no relevance. That's Tosa's question. Next to the We rely on a single witness regarding a woman that's Iguna. Otherwise, she remains a chained widow. widow. If the question is, as a slave, he's not permitted to marry a what? A full Jewess. So what do you do? So let him be right. Right? Let him not give the get. 
the one who delivers the get, unless you have two witnesses, he should not give the get to the man. If he gives the get to the person, then it becomes a problem. Why it becomes a problem? Because on a Torah level, he's emancipated. Rabbinically, we don't see it because there's a question he may not be emancipated, because it may be a forgery. So we should say, unless you have two witnesses delivering the get, the get should not be given to the, to the, to the slave. And he's still permitted to the slave woman, because he's a slave. If you give it, it creates a problem. Don't give it. Why, why create a leniency? There's no basis for a leniency. A woman, she remains, she can't remarry. But wait a second. But then you have to put that on the same level as, a, as Iguna. That's to say, the Yishlombe, the Choshev Igun, Hod Osabas Chorin. Umashe Nechayim, here it's coupled. That that is considered Igun, being denied the ability to marry a Jewish woman, and also not being fully obligated in all mitzvos, that denial, denying him that right, is the quibble of Aguna. So therefore, we have the special dispensation to allow him to become the Jew, to expedite his, the transition from slave to Jew more quickly. being permitted to a Jewish woman and being fully obligated in all mitzvahs. Right now, he's, he, he's, he's the semi-Jew. To become the full Jew. What's the value of full Jew? To be permitted to marry a Jewish woman rather than being with a slave woman. And what? And to be f obligated in all mitzvahs. It sort of seems the woman who is part of the woman is in a state of suffering. So we're saying that this Really wants to take <coughs> One second. Let's, let's just see. The Gemara says we have the Gemara that on a Torah level, if you give the writ of emancipation without fonefon in echtam, the slave is, is on a Torah level is, is freed as the woman. It's purely rabbinical. What's the, what's the concern? By a woman, he's going to say the get is a forgery. So he's going to cast. He's going to create a question. The kids may be mamzerim. By saying the slave, I never, get, I never wrote the document, you're going to say that his children are slaves and not Jewish children, even though they're really Jewish children. So we're putting, they're, they're on par. They're both on the same level. In terms of what the master will do, the master will do similarly to what the husband will do. The slaves. It's, it's a different concept. It's a different. I understand that. But, but, yeah, but the Gemara calls that laws. Later, the Gemara is going to refer to that as laws. You're casting aspersion on the what? On the children's validity as Jews, on the pedigree as Jews. Okay? I understand. Yeah, but it could be a question. It could be, what about if she's the mother? What about if she's the, she's the one who's receiving the get? When to say slave, would not differentiate whether it's the man or the woman. Well, we're going to discuss that. Like a okay. But she's still not a Jew. She's not a Jewess. Still. She just loses plenty. Fulfilling a mitzvah as a Jew is different than fulfilling a mitzvah as a slave. It's a different, different reality. Can I just ask, just, you know, we had this question uh, the other day about um, a person who's occupying somebody's house and he claims it was mine by the mitzvah, but he sell it to you in this three year period. Correct. Uh, and it's within, three years, and this is within three years. In three years, over three years. Correct. Okay. Does the same thing apply to a slave? So now a slave, this, this former slave, he claims he's a former slave. He's been married and living with a, with a, with a real woman, a Jew, for, for four years. And this other man comes down and casts his Do we treat it like the house? 
inside three years, outside three years, does this matter? It's a whole different st- story. Um, you see, when you have a piece of property, when you lodge a protest, he claims that property is his. A slave could go into, could go into hiding. You can't. There is discussion about a slave. There is a discussion about a slave. No, no, no. I understand. There is, there is a, I understand that. But again, property is, is property. I claim you're occupying it. Why did you remain silent? I say the same thing to the man who's the former owner of this slave. He's been living here in broad daylight. Why didn't you say something? But, but, uh, but, see, but then, then you're picking and choosing. You're picking and choosing the case. And what happens if your slave was not living in broad daylight, openly as, as, as that original person? He goes into hiding. See, property is always, it's always open. You're occupying my field. A person cannot tolerate to watch somebody occupied the field is known for three years and remain, si- remain silent. So the silence is a confirmation that there was a transfer. With a slave, it depends on the situation. Sometimes yes, sometimes not. That's what I'm saying. See, the Gemara says this. What about if a person, we normally, if a person has an inanimate object and he's in possession of it? Possession is 100% of the law. Not, 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 uh, it's 100% of the law because we have a principle if you possess something, it's yours. Why? Because we say that we have, we can say with certainty, a person has a cheskos kashi, he's not a thief. So how did it come into his possession? Evidently, he must have purchased it or was gifted to him. What about if you have a situation, the Marble Basa speaks, you have sheep. Sheep can wander in. Or a slave. You're in possession of somebody else's slave. No, we're not questioning. He is a slave. The one who possesses a slave claims, I purchased the slave. The original owner says, I never sold a slave. Possession is that 100% of the law. Someone says, no. With the slave, you have to have proof that you purchased the slave. Why? Because maybe the slave didn't like his original master and walked into, into, into the, over to the new master. So therefore, possession is not an indication. But, in but that's in regard to owning the slave as a slave. But in terms of being emancipated, that's something else. The person that is originally was, was a slave and he has no proof he ever was emancipated, it's a problem. He has to have that document. It's like a woman who's married and she doesn't ever get to prove that she was divorced. Well, We'll say Cheskes Kashwa, she, if she's living with another man, that clearly says she was divorced. Doesn't say anything. Doesn't say anything. Even though the Gemara says in Ksubis that a woman would not have the insolence to say to her husband that you divorced me if she, he did not divorce her. So that Alan Sadi is the equivalent of establishing that she definitely received the get. Because a woman wouldn't have the, the insolence to say to her, such a thing. Such, such chutzpah. In order to ease upon a uh, in the presence of a husband to say that, she wouldn't be able to say that. What? It was not. A woman says she received it, she goes to court. If she tells the court the husband's not there, she's not believed. But if she says in the presence of the husband, she's definitely believed. Okay? In the case of the sheep who walks over to somebody else, is there is Possession is not, is, not, is not an indication of anything. Of course, the sheep may have wandered onto his, into his property. So it's not. It's not. It's not. Someone has a question. What about you have a, 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 an infant in a cradle, and the cradle is in somebody else's property with the, the slave? Someone says since the infant usually goes with its mother, the mother may have transferred the, 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 the infant in the cradle from one master to the other master. So even though the, the, cra- the child can't go on its own, it's an infant, doesn't make a difference. So again, possession even of the, of the infant is not an indication of possession. Okay. So Tosis answers, so David's bringing out, Aguna seems to be, it's, it's a hardship. The woman is, is suffering. Here, I mean, there's no suffering the slave. The slave was a slave before, so even if he's a slave. But because denying the right to marry a Jewish woman and not being fully obligated, that's the equivalent of a guna. So we're not equating it in terms of hardship. Not in hardship. 
But it's again the reason why we're, we're agreeable to be lenient to bring about that transition from slave, which is chattel, to being a fully functional Jew. That is, we're not saying that's a iguna. That's the equivalent of iguna. Iguna is, is, is hardship. For this reason, so we say it's the equivalent. It's not a guna. Slavery is, uh, is hardship also. Not the same kind, but it's hardship. No, no. It's be a slave. You're a slave. You are a slave. It's not a hardship. No, no. no, no We're talking about... Uh, no. And then the, your children are Again, still somebody to sends a get, the gift to a slave. And now there's a question. The get, may, the writ of may, may have been forged. Right? If you give it, if he receives it, then he can marry not a Jewish woman, he's not permitted to be with a slave woman. Right? So we're saying, unless you have two witnesses to validate it initially, the get should not be given to the slave. That should be given to him. What's, what's the hardship? I don't understand. What's the hardship? He is a slave. Here, the woman itself shall never be divorced. The husband wants to divorce her, now you're not able to divorce her. So that's a hardship for the woman. So therefore... To address the rabbinic issue, we rely on testimony of a single witness, which is the shliach. Okay. Further. Ton rabbonon shloshet dvarim drochim shavu giti noshen shechri avodim shavu shavu lemolchum mevi. They're the equivalent one of the other regarding fani ech fani nechtam, whether it's a get isha or get shichru. The kol get shish love eight kusi posu. Here. If you have a get that one of the wood side is, is a kuthite, it's possible. Get, what Rashi says, monetary documents are called get also. Get does mean specifically a divorce document. Chutz mi gite no shichre avodim, which tomorrow we'll discuss. Except for gite no shichre avodim. Now, let's talk. If you hold like Remeir, that Edi Hasim Akarsi, that what gives the get its force to terminate a marriage? It's the witness who sign. And saying you can't have the eight kusi on it. He's not, he's not a qualified witness. Right? But what about if you're an opinion eighty Messira Karsi? What gives the get its force? It's the trans in the presence of kosher witnesses. And let's say that the eight who signs is like an upstanding non Jew. And we could say with certainty, this person will not put a signature on document unless it's truthful. So w what is its value? He's not giving the get any, any, any validity. He's only creating an anasadi, right? We could say with certainty that this get was written by the husband, and now, therefore, it could be given to the presence of witnesses, right? According, according to Rebbe Lozer. According to Rebbe Meir, that the, the aid, you need a qualified aid to sign... A kusi is not a qualified aid. So the get cannot be a kosher get under any circumstance. So to not who signed the get as Eid Nasira is the most important thing. What? If Eid Nasira is the vital. But part you have to know that it was written by the husband. How do you know the uh, husband authorized right. so the writing so of the get? That, so that tells me it wasn't written by the woman. Right? Of course, this witness would not sign illegally, right? Because of his of his standing as as a witness. It's almost like a regular star. Don't we say that? No. What gives it its value is a star of the Eidi Masira. So now we know this get being authorized by the husband could be given in the presence of kosher witnesses. According to Remeyer, what are you giving? You're giving nothing. It doesn't doesn't uh, in, intrinsically it's not a get. Eidi Masira has no value for Remeyer. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. No value whatsoever. You have documents, monetary documents that were issued by the non-Jewish court. By non-Jewish court. Although the signers are non-Jews, it's kosher. Okay? Again, we're saying make this point. Except for a get isha and shikhar avodim. Rid, rid of divorce, rid of emancipation, according to a mayor. Why? Because he owns a chasim akarsi. So, though we could say with definiteness the people who signed are honest people, the court are upstanding, you have a principle, dinam al as Rashi will say in a moment. Dinam al the law of the land is the law. 
but factually. So if the law of the land is the law, so we can say Hefka Bez and Hefka. Right? Let's say to transfer a piece of property. Hefka Bez and Hefka. But if factually you have to be qualified witness to give the get its force to terminate the marriage or to emancipate the slave, it's not going to help you any. We're dealing with issue. We're not dealing with, it's not a monetary issue here. It's much more than monetary. Therefore, they're not qualified. For a monetary document, they're qualified. There's a Rashi, Tosis argues. Rashi says, Why by get? A Nanju has no relevance to get, has no relevance to Kedushin. Therefore, it, it's interesting. I mean, if the Chacham want, they could revoke the marriage. They could know the marriage retroactively. Right? We say, Kol HaMakadosh died to Rabbanu Ben Kaddish. So just as we say, Hefker Bez and Hefker, we condemn money, property, and we transfer monetary, we can do the same thing with the Yet. Right? We can do the same thing. The marriage is not a marriage, and we'll act as if it is. The Get is a Get, and we'll annul it retroactively, and we'll say the Get is a Get. Rabbinically, it's a rabbinic Get. But on Torah level, the marriage doesn't exist. We can do the same thing. So why don't we? We do it by, by monetary. If actually... You're not qualified. Why should we do Hefker Bez and Hefker? And why don't we do, why don't, why don't we know the marriage? But we make a differentiation. So that's what Rashi is really addressing. In regard to marriage and divorce, Hovod Lushach, there's Gitnu Kedushin. A non has no relevance not to marriage, to Kedushin, or to, to divorce. To this process of marriage, no. How does a non Jew marry a, a woman? There is marriage. There is marriage. A man meets a woman, he says, we're going to be together as man and wife. That's, that's marriage for a non-Jew. Nothing more than that. What's divorce? They, dis- they decide to part their ways. That's divorce. They will not continue to, the, the relationship. If, let's say, they didn't decide to part their ways, and the woman mm-hmm. chooses to have an extramarital affair, that's adultery, she's put to death. But as long as they... What? Because they both agreed initially to be together. That's marriage for a non-Jew. A Jew could get back together with his wife. That's something else, yeah, but that's, that's a side issue. That's a side issue. One more second. One, let, let's get this straight. One more second. So, Gitten and Kedushin have no relevance to a non-Jew. Because they have no relevance, therefore, there's, we're not going to know the marriage because they have no relevance to this whole process. That it should appear as if it is. The concept of a document creating marriage or creating divorce has no relevance to a, to a non-Jew. So we're not going to fabricate something if the actual mechanism has no relevance to a non-Jew. What about a non-Jew regarding m- monetary things, transfer, documents? They have relevance to that. As Rosh says, the Mitzvah Bedinim. A non-Jew has, has, has monetary laws. So as because he's Mitzvah Bedinim, he's obligated to maintain laws which pertain to ownership and transfer, they were willing to say Hefker Bez and Hefker. If Naju would have no relevance to Dinim, we wouldn't do it either. So that's what Rashi says. Avol al Dinim Tzav B'nei Noach. Dinim, that's one of what? That's one of Shev Mitzvah B'nei Noach. Therefore, although in this particular context, this deed, he's not qualified to write a sign on the deed. Or to be involved in the, the document for the transfer, or whatever it may be, doesn't make a difference. But, but, but since the process has relevance to the non-Jew as the Jew, therefore we apply the principle of Hefke as an Hefke. Since we equate the emancipation of the slave to the, to the what? To the divorce, to the divorce document. Because that terms is we equate B to A, so just as A, the non-Jew has no relevance to, to Christus, to, to divorce, Jewish divorce, identically regarding the slave, although slave is ownership, it's also, he's a chattel, doesn't make a difference. But since the process, since the slave is similar to the woman, because the Gzer Shavu, therefore we treat the Get no different we treat the Shechru, no different than the Get Isha. So what's A Kusit? Why do you say A Kusit? He's a Kuthite. We'll, we'll, we'll see, because a Kuthite, we'll discuss. Is that a, he's a, there was a conversion that took place, but there was no question. 
either it was an initially valid conversion or they had reverted back to idolatry. We'll, we'll get there. Every document is possible except for get a get shift rule. And then we say here that processed by secular courts, they're all valid except for get get Right, right. So these are these these, these are full these are no no it's not it's not. And we said according to Remeyer. According to Remeyer, according to Reb Loza, this would be valid. There are three that we're bringing three that are the same. We'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see in a moment. Right now we speak according to Remeyer. What gives the get its force? The witnesses. These people aren't willing. Regardless of their integrity, and we could say definitely they're not lying, but the get, Isha, the, the, what, what gives it its force? You have to have a kosher witness. These people are not qualified to be witnesses. The price is not according to a man. The price is according to somebody else. Which price? The one that we said that Adam put him up for a portion of the get and Isha. You cannot call it Remeir. You cannot go like Right. At this point, we're saying that uh, Gentiles can be valid witnesses on monetary transactions. But, but that's based on Dino Malchus and Dino. But why do, we, why do we validate it? Because since a non-Jew, meaning if you go through the motion, it appears that it's a qualified document. We accept that document. But what is the process? The process Hefker is Hefker, Hefkar. Because the non-Jew and the Jew were on equal footing regarding Dinim. We're obligated to maintain property rights and ownership rights. They have the same thing. The process may be a different process. It doesn't make a difference. We have to have kosher witnesses. They have their way to do it. They do it differently. The Torah doesn't accept the validity of a non-kosher witness. It doesn't make a difference. But we, we apply the principle of Hefkeb as an Hefkeb. Are you saying that the concept of a Canaanite slave is not a monetary transaction? It is, but Rashi says because we have Xerisha Vololo Isha. So therefore, e even though we're able to, to, to annul it and to free him based on what we want, but since the Torah equates the emancipation of the slave to the divorce of the woman, we treat it identically the same it's as the divorce. It's an exception. It's an exception. Mm -hmm. Because theoretically, then, we should be able to sign a document of emancipation. And we'll apply our principle we'll of, apply principle of uh, Hefke Bez and Hefke. Well, Dina Mavsadina, the reason why it, it is effective is because we intervene with Hefke Bez and Hefke. So, you were saying no, in this case, no. Because the Torah equates the slave to the woman. And since the woman has no relevance is to the, to the non-Jew, therefore the slave, for that same reason, has no relevance. So presumably, well, a Gentile living in uh, Eretz Israel could purchase a Canaanite slave and emancipation of that slave has got nothing to do with becoming a Jew. Doesn't make, a doesn't, doesn't make a difference. Doesn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. But the Torah equates B to A. That's enough. See, I would have said, the Gemara says that a non-Jew cannot own a, own a slave in terms of as a chattel. A non-Jew cannot own a slave as a chattel. Another human being. A Jew could own a human being. Yeah. What? They could have. They could have a monetary interest. But to own a human being like an animal, you cannot, right, you cannot own a human being like an animal. Right. It's not a chattel. A Jew could own a, 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 a human being as a chattel if it's a non-Jew. A, a Jewish slave is not a chattel, an Ebed Ivri. Ebed Kanani is a chattel. If, if this is a, it's a Noahide concept. Even Noahides cannot own one. This concept, yes. non-Jew. So from the time of Noah, people were not permitted to have slaves. No, they could have slaves. It means if a slave agrees to sell himself. But the question is, to what degree do you own him? You only own him regarding his monetary output, but you don't own him as a chattel. Like you would own an animal. Right? He's not your property. You have an interest, like you have a lien. You have rights in the person. Well, good, of course not. So when we say that uh, Eliezer was Evid Avram, he was an Evid Kanani. What does that mean? Well, it dep depends who who was Avram. Yeah, well, if Avram's a Jew, he's he's a chattel. But we say Avram was uh, a gentile. He's been north that he did not own. He what did not. That means he he purchased him and he agreed that he, he's like an indentured servant. What you call an indentured servant? His life is dedicated, 
and he agreed to dedicate his life that you have all my ability is dedicated to you financially. It's like you sign a contract. Any output belongs to the company. And if that slave should run away... He's, 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 stealing, he's denying the person his rights of, of, of productivity. That's what he's denying him. And if it easily runs away, that's the concept there? Same. Ibn Kanani to, to a Jew? And Ibn Kanani who's... It's like, it's, like, it's like an animal running away. So what's the difference? The, there are differences. The differences. Um, the children that, that he bears, right, belong to the master. Okay.